Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this tips and tricks tutorial, we'll take a look at symmetry in uh, ZBrush. Now, we're looking at an old orc model I had done. Um, it was a very low poly model, and it, it was kind of stylized. It had to follow a particular pattern for it, a particular type of uh, style. But if we hide a couple of these things, actually we can leave those right there. We'll go ahead and hide this piece. Actually, okay, I'll tell you what, we'll just leave that in there. He actually had an axe too. Actually, there's a shield as well. But I only did half the shield since it was a mirrored shield. Uh, but uh, anyway, most of the models that, that you will tend to work on will be symmetrical. So if we go into our uh, orc, if we look at the uh, body and everything, everything is done on one side, it's done on the other. It's mirrored. It's 100% mirrored. Obviously, the easiest way to mirror something in ZBrush, of course, is you can see right now it's it's ready for being mirrored. It's X. If I hit X, okay, this is what your it should look like. If I hit X, then it comes up as symmetrical. That means it's ready for me to turn around and work on it. By the way, I can actually scale up my brush using the brackets key on my keyboard. So you can scale it up, scale it down, you know, whatever. You can do that on the fly. You can also hit S to adjust your draw size as you need to. But brackets, I, I find it's far more interactive. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on the little uh, paintbrush icon so you can see what this is going to look like. Let's go ahead and switch to just the red wax. So you can see that this is what the model basically looked at. It was it looked like it was a very quick model. Uh, had to follow a particular kind of style with it. But I think it turned out fairly well for a quickie. Uh, but as you can see, what we can do, let's go ahead and switch to our freehand. Let's check our stroke. By the way, when you're going to work in ZBrush, always make sure that when you're on freehand, uh, the the setting is for the mouse average is set for 4. You always want to take that and scale scroll it up to the right so it's 15. That means it's a smooth roll as you're working on the uh, different strokes as you're adding in details and usually lazy mouse is on and you want to turn that off okay but let's just do a quickie just so you can see what's going on it's just to, to re-familiarize yourselves all right so we're going to go ahead and do a z subtract we're going to just add in as you can see we can just etch in cut in some stuff it's not exactly what we want to do let's go ahead and switch to our damn standard uh, that'll be good. You can just hit D once you're in the brushes and select the damn standard. I'm going to scale that that down a little bit, and then there we go. You can add in some details, and again, you can see as I'm doing this that whatever I'm doing on one side is being replicated 100% on the other. So that's symmetry as we're kind of used to. Anything I do on one side is done on the other. You can turn around and actually. Uh, switch it to an add and that way you can get a little crisp edge on the bottom of the lip you can do that on the top a bit if you wanted you could change this and arc it out a little bit you, know, you can do all sorts of things with it just so the sky's the limit but that symmetry is you're used to using it I want to do a quick one where you can see symmetry and what you can do with it uh, using something other than what you used to on a particular model. Okay, let's go ahead and switch our our simple brush. Uh, let's first just go to a uh, plain 3D. Okay, I'm just going to uh, bring it onto my uh, viewport. It was a little crooked, so I held down my shift to snap it into a nice 90 degree angle uh, orientation. I'm going to select the Make Poly Mesh 3D. You always have to do that with one of these tools, so it, it'll um, it makes it deformable. And I'm, I'm going to subdivide by Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Well, actually, we won't do that last Control D. We'll keep it at about 263,000 polygons, as you see. And I'm going to go ahead and click this arrow to bring this back. All right. If I turn on X, you can see where the symmetry is going to be for this 
particular piece. Let me go ahead and quickly switch to a freehand and I'm going to go to my standard brush. So if I create just an edge or, or a dip, I can actually cut through that really nicely. Let's do that again. There we go. Okay, so it shows you this is this is uh, the easy way to be able to just create a quick detail. All right, Control Z. If we switch it to the Z Add, and we could do it again this way. Okay, that's just symmetry. That's on the X. All right. Now, usually when you're going to do something like this and you want it to be really nice and clean, you will want to turn on your lazy mouse at this point because it will create a nice drag behind, as you can see right there. So, so it helps you, it helps as a guide so you know where you're going with your particular shaping. All right. But one of the nice things about symmetry is we can do a couple different kinds of symmetry. As you see, if you, you click your transform, uh, palette. I'm going to go ahead and dock it over on this side. See, this is the button that activates our symmetry. Now we have the X on, so that means whatever I do on this side is done on, on both sides, but it's across horizontally. Let's go ahead and do for Y. Now Y is different. If I now do it on this side, I'm only doing on one side. It's not or arcing on both because we've now switched our orientation. It's now vertical. See, now if I turn around and do something on the uh, Y, it's all vertical now, okay? On the Z, you're not going to see anything because Z is depth, and so that's not really going to work for what we need, and that's fine, you know, I don't mind. We'll go ahead and deal with that. Uh, let's make sure we select one of these, and then we're going to hit this R here. This is radial symmetry. What that means, if you see this, is it's going, it's creating there you go. We can actually create a couple different shapes with, with the X symmetry on. Uh, it's actually based on the radial count right now is 8. We can turn it up. We can actually turn it down if we want. Uh, let's just do it to 4. Okay. So if we're going to have on uh, any of these, okay, we can now create little sections. Let me turn off the uh, lazy mouse. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, I can now do a couple of these right off the bat. All right. Okay, let's switch that so we're not in the Y. Let's do just the, just the X. Okay. And what I'm doing in, in a positive in one area, I'm getting a negative in the other. So I can do a positive here. I'll get a negative over there. Then I can switch this out. Let's do a positive here. And a positive here. Very quickly, you can <laughs> really kind of change this. By the way, uh, when you actually turn it this way, you can't see anything. It doesn't mean it's not there. If you actually scroll down to uh, Display Properties and hit Double, you can now see on both sides. It's now basically showing you both sides of the polygons, both sides of the, the plane 3D. Okay, just so you know. I'm going to go ahead and undo all of these. I'm going to go ahead and hit Double Side though. All right, I'm going to. Uh, with this on, I'm going to go ahead and just do an edge out. You can actually get some really interesting designs with this. Also, it, you're, not, you're not relegated to doing this just on planes. If we switch this out really quickly, for instance, we go ahead and yes, switch. We'll go ahead and get into say a cylinder, control N to clear the screen, and I'll just left click and drag out, T to edit it, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a poly mesh 3D, and control D, control D, control D, one more time, okay. 
Again, the same thing. The really nice thing about this is we can go ahead and in our symmetry, we can activate it. We can do a radial. And let's see what we should try to do. This is probably going to need it in the Y. There we go. You can actually create very quickly and easily like a something for like a, a weld on this. Okay. You can do it over this way if we change it from X to or uh, from, from Y to X, we can do the same thing over here. Okay. Can smooth that out. I'm holding down my shift. Let's try for the Z on this side now that we actually have some. And there's the Z. So now we can turn around and easily create edges in here. And I'm just scaling my mouse in and then pulling it back out. There you go. So symmetry works a lot of different ways. It's not just in the X. Uh, it's on in the Y and in the Z as well. This is just a very quick, quick, quick demo to show you that you can use it for a bunch of different things on a bunch of different items uh, without it having to be... Um, in fact, you can actually do this way. Let's see, I can just do that. If you want to do it all the way around. But very quickly, very easily, you can you can create a lot of shapes, you know, mechanical shapes this way you know if you're doing that or put studs on something there you go and it's a, it's a lot of fun it's it's something to play with uh, when you when you're gonna work with characters you know use the X as you need to but if you're gonna work with something else you do have a couple of different options you have the X Y and Z as well as the radial symmetry where you can turn around and add more radial points or drop them down and depending on your particular shapes you can turn around and add a lot of features to it and uh, change things as you need it. Anyway, I hope this has been fun for you. Uh, my name is Stephen G. Wells and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.